G'day guys, welcome back to the off season, our first episode back uh, and our last one of this uh, concept. So we've gone through the first 12 teams in the NRL and we've brought back one champion from each team. Now we've got the top four. So we've got Parramatta, Sharks, Cowboys, Penrith, obviously the top four from the 2022 season, the end of the regular season. We're going to bring back one champion from that club's history uh, to put straight into their 2023 side. So if you've watched the episodes before, uh, sometimes you just pick the best player. Sometimes you pick a player where there might be a weaker spot or a hole in that side. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have made two rules for today with Parramatta and the Cowboys. Uh, obviously, at his absolute best, Jared Hayne. I think you pick him and just shove him anywhere. So we've taken Hayne out. Uh, so you have to pick someone other than Jared Hayne. And for the North Queensland Cowboys, uh, you cannot pick Jonathan Thurston. So the two Dalian medalists from 2014, we've taken both of them out. You have to pick someone else joined by my 5'8 for all of these. Maddie, welcome back, mate. What's going on? This one was... Uh this one was hard because as obviously the teams get higher on the ladder, they're way more balanced. Less so problems. Less problems, which makes more problems for us in this podcast. Yeah, now we uh, we haven't had any discussion here as to who we've picked. So we've got a couple of options for both. But, uh, Matty, I wouldn't be shocked, and I'm sure you'd be the same, if I or you say someone that isn't even on our list because there's, there's a couple of rogue ones here. There's also – we've got not so much the Cowboys – but like, I mean, kind of, but not really. Like the para and eels and sharks as well. They go back like years and years and years, decades and decades. Yeah. So there's a lot to like. I obviously I initially just think of you know people since 2000, but there's a lot to pick from. A lot to pick from here, and I think as you said, mate, less problems with these teams. Like, uh, there, there's no there's no one in these teams that I think fuck that person's going to be a liability come finals time. They are very well-balanced squads. Uh, obviously, they finished in the top four last year. All were very successful throughout the year. So very, very tough. A lot of rep players sprinkled across each team. And a lot of, like between Parramatta Sharks, Cowboys in particular, even the Panthers boys, a lot of underrated guys in this team too, Matty, that just do mm. their job inside week in, week out. Yeah, we'll get to Panthers. i got something interesting to say about Panthers when it comes when it comes to that, like, yeah, that, that that's a hard one because it's, you just you don't really want to replace anyone. Because yeah, it was. I was a little bit alarmed when we were sitting here writing them down, Maddie. I heard him say Penrith, and, and he sparked up and said, "I've got one." So yeah. I'm very very interested. He seemed very excited. Uh, I've got a couple of curly ones for Penrith, so looking forward to getting to them. But we will kick off with the Parramatta Eels. We have taken out Jared Hayne. Uh, so you need to pick a player from the history of the Eels. Obviously, a side that haven't had too much success over the last. 20, 30-odd years. Made a couple of grand finals, including last season. Uh, but obviously, the 80s was the real golden era for the Parramatta Eels. So I'm very keen to see which direction Matty goes in here. Who have you gone for, mate? So obviously, you, you want to get, like, Haynes out. Uh, he's the obvious choice. But as I look at their, you know, best 17 for this year and who, who they've lost, obviously, they lost Nikore, big one. They lost was Isaiah Papali'i. Um, they're pretty good in the in the front row. They're like good in the spine. Obviously, they they recruited Josh Hodgson, but um, you know he's been fantastic for for a while. I think their back rowers, we still don't really know what their starting back row is going to be. I think Sean Lane will probably be one, but then you've got you've got Madison, and who knows if he's going to play round one or round four or whatever it is. Um, like Bryce Cartwright, you got. So I, I just think there's a there's an opportunity for. Uh, Nathan Highmarsh to who to slot into this team and to be honest Guru this is probably the most obvious one for me yeah I think Hindy is a very very good shout obviously losing Papali you still got Sean Lane uh, so bring in a back rower uh, would be a great shout losing their core a too um, you all know I've spoken about my boy Jermaine Hopgood I think he's going to do very well there but uh, mate hard to compare anyone to the great Nathan Hindmarsh oh yeah go to, like, they got such a rich history at, at the Eels but I, I feel like he'd easily be in their best team ever and in the conversation of most decorated eels player of all time he's definitely up there and I, to be honest i'm not sure why but i feel like we look back on the career of nathan hindmarsh in most discussions and just pretend like he was a tackling bot with no attacking upside mm. he was a tremendous player Hindy. oh yeah I, i've said it a number of times i think him and fletch because they're such funny fuckers we forget how much good footballers they were especially because like they put so much shit on him as well yeah and like if you look on that couch who do you reckon the best player is out of, oh. out of all that? Um, well, out of Maddie, Brian Fletcher, Fletcher Hindy, and Hindy. And Tallis. Yeah. 
See, it's tough because they're all guns in, in all different ways. Yeah. But, I mean, in saying that, three out of the four played the same position. Yeah, that's true. So, I, I would probably go Gordy, to yeah. be honest with you. Gordy, Hindy. Oh, I, mate, I still think Maddie is so fucking underrated. Mm. I think when you're... I think Maddie's similar to a Stuart McGill. He just came along in the era of Laurie Daly, Brad Fittler, these sort of guys. Played yeah. a bit of Origin. I think he played uh, in the 95 World Cup as well, uh, Maddie Johns. But he just came along in an era of some of the best 5.8s our game has ever seen. Yeah. It's funny how this conversation turned to Maddie Johns. But yeah. Very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, as I said, four, four good players on that couch and they give Heine shit and the way... You know, if you're a 10 year old watching, you'd think that he was the shittest of the lot, but, you know, it's only because he didn't win that premiership, which is, yeah. been, you know, that's, the joke's always funny. So, but yeah, he's, I loved how much I went to his last game. Uh, I think it was against, I think it was against the Dragons or the Tigers or someone. It was at ANZ and he kicked the last goal. Everyone I want to say Bulldogs. Field. Maybe it was Bulldogs. Yeah. I, honestly, I can't remember. Kicked but, the goal, had the Hindmarsh jersey on, didn't they? Yeah. It was, it was great. Um, Legend, legend of the game. Yeah, absolute legend, Hindy. Uh, very good shout, mate. I'm going to go uh, a little bit more. I'm going to go a little bit different as you've already picked a back rower, and I think you've picked the best back rower you could have possibly picked from the Parramatta Eels. Um, I'm having a look at the back line, mate. I think the halves are pretty much set. I think fullback Gutho does a tremendous job. If you can't pick Hayne, I don't think there's, there's anyone else you'd probably pick over Gutho. Uh, mate, I have a look at their centers and their wingers in particular. I think there's a spot that you could probably upgrade in there. Uh, a couple of guys that I'm looking at, obviously, um, Luke Burt, similar to Nathan Highmarsh, is around for a very long time, champion player. I think I can probably get a little bit more upside. You've got guys like Cronin, uh, Brett Kenny, one of my favorites. He played a lot of footy, obviously, out in the center, so you could shift him out there. I'd love that pick. But, uh, mate, I just think bringing Semi Rad Radra back. Oh, I didn't think of him. I think that we... That's good. We look at his career and it was so short-lived, but I think, Matty, can you get up his try-scoring numbers and shit? I yeah. think we forget just how dominant this guy was during his time in the NRL. He was unbelievable. Have you got the numbers there, Matty? Yep. So he played 94 games yep. in the NRL and scored 82 tries. Wow. And that, don't forget, that's before all these new rules and stuff. So there's obviously there's been a lot more points in the last few years, and taking nothing, nothing away from uh, the try scorers now, but uh, a little bit harder to score back then. Obviously we've pulled it, we've pulled it back a little now. So this wasn't in there wasn't some crazy year like he scored 82 tries. That's almost a try per game. That's unbelievable. And I mean, if you were to pair him up on one side with um, Mike Sibel on the other side. Like a ferocious oh, back three yeah. when you throw Gutho in there as well. So I just think as well, as you said, mate, I, I think that uh, I think that he would be more suited to the game now than when he played as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he'd be he, – I reckon him and Alex Johnson would be fighting for yeah. – for because AJ's got 30 tries last two years. Only, it, only four times has someone hit 30 tries. AJ's done it twice. Um. I think Rod Raja and, Ar and AJ would have a great battle yeah, for the top try scorer because, like, obviously AJ is the best finisher in the game at the moment, but Rod Raja was honestly one of the best wingers ever. It's just yep. such a shame we only saw four full seasons of him. And, I mean, not like like he was playing in a good side, but not, not a fantastic side by any means. I, I, I don't have where, where they finished each year that he played, but I imagine there would have been a couple of seasons where they would have gone fucking bang average. Uh, I got it. Let me have a look. Give me, give me a second. Yeah. So, yeah, I've picked him. I think that having him on one sting with Mike Siva on the other side, uh, then you probably have your Will Penasini, your Bailey Simonsons, these sort of guys in the centres. Uh, that would be my pick. The other one that, I mean, I, I think there'd be a lot of people sitting at home, Matty, going, how the fuck could you leave out Peter Sterling? And look, yeah, yeah, yeah. is Sterling a better player than Mitch Moses? 100%, yes. But... I think Mitch Moses does a good enough job there for you. He just got you to a grand final. Uh, I think he does well and truly a good enough job to be able to build a little bit stronger somewhere else as well. So that's why we've probably left out, you know, your Brett Kenny, your Peter Stone, both better than their current halves, don't get me wrong. But I think you can upgrade weaker spots and be happy with what you've got there. Have you got Radra's season records there? Yeah, they only made the finals once. That's so, incredible. Yeah, they, they, were, they were pretty pretty shit para in, in like, that little period and how many years is that four or five well he played five seasons but the first year he only played like four games so let's okay. say four yeah. e even the one he didn't he didn't make the final so it was 2017 when they made 
Did they make a pre- no? They made the semi and lost to the Cowboys. It was yep. that year. Okay, and then he left after that. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Fuck, what a footballer. Yeah, so uh, we're bringing back Nathan Hindmarsh in the back row for Maddie, and I'm going to bring back Semi Radradra and uh, back some of their new recruits at the Parramatta Eels to go good. All right, our next side is the Cronulla Sharks. Um, no, it's not. A, it's the Cowboys. It's Cowboys, sure. Let's run with that. <laughs> Cowboys with no Jonathan Thurston. Um, I found this one to be the toughest, Matty. Yeah, I don't know about too. you, but I found this one to be really difficult. If you go and have a look through that North Queensland Cowboys side, uh, are there better players in the history of the club that have played positions, potentially? Um, but no one's a problem. Mm. They literally don't have a problem. Some of the guys that I would have said at the start of last year, a little bit iffy, Tolongi, Nanai, they've turned out to be their best fucking players. See, my only problem with the Cowboys this year is that, and it's so funny how they had the exact opposite problem last year, is that they're like, they've got a good back line, but if they've got an injury, then they're, they're probably in a bit of trouble. Yep. But for the sake of this game, that's irrelevant because we're looking at the best 17. And if that's my biggest problem, they still have an elite, well, they do, they have one of the, they have a great back line. So I don't know where to put. They've got the probably one of the best depth in forwards in the in the comp. Their spine is great, improving. Um, it's really hard to take someone out and put someone in. So who have you gone for? <laughs> so I shot you not. Yeah, <laughs> I went. I went Michael Morgan, and yeah. this is. I don't know. I actually don't know what I'd do. Like maybe I'd. It's so hard because Dearden won Origin last year. Would I um, have Dearden and? Morgan as my halves, or would I have Dearden in reserve grade or maybe playing off the bench or something um, and have Chad there? That probably makes the most sense. And if you were talking a year ago today, that would be absolutely perfect. Yep. Um, I also had him in there for his versatility because he can play a few positions. He can play fullback, he can play in the centres, he can play in the halves. You know, you could throw him in the forwards. Um, you, could, you could chuck him in 13 in a fucking heartbeat, Michael Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is crazy because he'd still be the th- even though he's a gun, he'd probably be the th- third most effective lock. Yep. I'm not saying he's the third best player out of Cotter and Tamalolo, but thirteenth most effective <laughs> thirteen of that team. So it's just it's just crazy. You could put him absolutely anywhere for that reason. Um, and of course, if if he was magically fit, he would be in my team somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where. I'd pr- may- maybe he'd be six, and and for now, Chad would be seven, um, and then did whether he plays fourteen or plays reserve grade and comes in later, I don't know, but, um, or if Morgan did in the house, I don't know, but he'd be in my team somewhere. If you were to show Morgan no respect whatsoever, he would make the perfect 14. Oh, f- yeah, 100%, because the, I think at the moment they don't really have a 14, do they? It'll be Jake Granville or yeah. young Tom Chester. I reckon Chester will get a gig, so it's very much so up for grabs there. Yeah, so I guess you could put him there, but, yeah, I'd probably have... <sighs> As I said, like a year ago, it'd be great. It'd be perfect, but... A year ago, he could have picked his position in this side. Oh, yeah. Well, that Without be, a fucking doubt. But my spoon, yeah. <laughs> sort of similar to the Parramatta side. Their halves did the job last year. Their halves were sensational Amazing, last year. Yeah, so good. Like we, we knew what Chad was capable of doing, whether he was going to be able to do it or not. He did. And then the other one was Tommy Dearden that we had question marks over. He went to Origin 3, and I thought he was one of the best players on the park. Oh, he was... He was tremendous. He broke our hearts. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Fuck that guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think that's a really good shout, Michael Morgan. You just about plug him anywhere. Uh, for me, I came down to two guys. Uh, I, I'm, I'll selfishly bring back Matty Bowen every day of the week. Yep. But fuck, how am I going to tell Scott Drinkwater he's not the Cowboys fullback anymore? Yeah, yeah. That, that, and that's the spot where I go, geez, I don't know. I'll tell you what, mate, the, the one spot that, like, if, if I was playing the North Queensland Cowboys, the one spot that I would probably try and attack, I think you can get a defensive a poor defensive read out of Kyle Felt here and there. He's a tremendous attacking player. He, he's, uh, I, but I don't know how every single year he manages to score 18 tries. Yeah, it's And crazy. it blows me away. Not to mention scoring the most important try in the club's history, potentially in the NRL history. Sensational. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, mate, if I was going to really nitpick and be an arsehole, I think that the Cowboys in their history, I think they've got the best defensive winger we've ever seen in Matt Singh. Mm. So he'd be one that I would consider bringing back. But... Uh, Gun to head, mate. Unfortunately, I probably have to tell Scotty Drink bloke that he's been a little bit unlucky because I'm the biggest Matty Bowen fanboy the world has ever seen. Just on Kyle Felt, he would have been so dirty at the end of 2020 when it was out of him and Alex Johnson 
to be the top try scorer. And in yeah. his last game, he scores a hat trick and goes, I think he went three ahead. He went, I think they were even. He went three ahead, so he pretty much locked it in. And then AJ scores five against the Roosters. Didn't Corey Allen pass one of them back to him? Yeah, because they oh. knew it was the it was the record breaking one. So that was the fourth one. I'm pretty sure. Oh, How fuck. dirty would it have been after a hat trick? To did you know? And I will have to research this. I'm pretty sure Felt played residence in 2015, Queensland resident. I'm pretty sure he played in the residence that year. What? And then went on to play in the grand final. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm going to Google that. Let me, Google let me I, I think he was playing for Townsville Blackhawks when he was there. I could be wrong. That's an interesting one, though. But, yeah, the Cowboys, Mick Morgan and Matty Bowen. But I've got my little Smokey in there as uh, Matty Singh just because I think he's the best defensive winger we've just about ever seen. Yeah, got Cole, anything, Felt, Cole Felt, number four center for the Queensland Residents in 2015. Did you know who he was playing for? Yeah, Townsville. Townsville, yeah. Fuck, that's incredible. Isn't that I didn't crazy? know that. Isn't that crazy? You learn something new every day, Matty. Yeah. I learn plenty about you every day. <laughs> All right. Are we going on the Cowboys? Yep. All right. Up, up, Cronulla. The Sharkies uh, coming off a tremendous year. Didn't finish in the fashion that they would have liked, the fashion that we expected based on the rest of their season. Uh, but a fantastic story. And you look through their side, there isn't a heap of holes here. Um, I've, got, I've got two or three guys that I could happily pick here. Have you got a standout, Matty? Is there one that nah, really stands I, out for you? I not really. I've got two names. What? Who wants to go first? Oh, uh, well, uh, you go. Okay. Well, I've got to pick one here. I thought you were going to go James Maloney. Was he one of them? No, but no. I'm okay. s- quickly I'm thinking I should change that. I forgot about Maloney. Oh, I forgot about Maloney. That's who who were the one. two you had? I had Eddinghausen and Peachy. Eddinghausen and Peachy. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Who do you have? Uh, I had E.T., Peachy. I always have my boy Gavin Miller in these lists. Yeah. But I also had Paul Gallen. They've yeah. lost Fafita. They've lost Tolman. Just an older head in that pack. Yeah, true. Is another one I would consider. And he's like, you know. But I think James Maloney, okay. considering how their season finished. Fuck, that's a good one, yeah. Going out in straight sets in finals. Uh, I love Matty Bowen. Oh, Matty Bowen. I do love Matty Bowen. I also yeah. love Matty Moylan, yeah. who I think was tremendous last year. But when you're a team that seemingly your only last obstacle to overcome is winning in big games... If I can't get Cooper Cronk, give me James Maloney. Yeah. I think you know what? I think I'm with you because Hines and Maloney together. Yeah. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. I how did I forget about Maloney? He's one of my favorite ever players. I think the other thing, and it's only a small thing, but you also go from uh, like I love everything Nico Hines did last year. The goal kicking. Yeah. Very hit and miss. Yeah. Bring in a James Maloney who hits him like a fucking four iron. I remember I remember clear. there was that there was that year, I think it was twenty thirteen, when I think Maloney was kicking for the Roosters. And Adam Reynolds was kicking for Sears, and neither of them could miss that year. Didn't miss. It was, it was crazy, though. Uh, I reckon Maloney's got one of the smoothest kicking styles, too. The way he hits yeah. him, it just glides. So I would probably go James Maloney. Mate, I, I was looking at ET, and I was going, yeah, but fuck, which of those centers all? I mean, maybe I'd move Talakai back yeah. into the back row, maybe, well, that, and play ET. That's why I'm thinking I might go with, with the Peach. Only because only they got. They got um, Talakai and Jesse Ramian, and then their wing is like, if, if, could you throw ET on the wing? It'd be highly disrespectful if you did. But if you did, you've still got Katara and Ronaldo Militalo, but you've still got Will Kennedy. And if you don't have Will Kennedy, you've still got Lockie Miller and fucking K Dyke. So it's so hard. Uh, I probably I probably can't move. If we're just t- talking positions, I can't move Ramian. I'm not going to move Talakai right now. So I'll probably have to go Peachy. Peachy at fullback. Yeah, Plus, nice. he's a fucking, I mean, so is ET, but he's just a club legend. Like, yeah. you won't find someone in Cronulla that doesn't like the page. I still think I'd be more than happy to bring Paul Gallen back too. Obviously, mm. like, you probably bring Paul Gallen back sure. at any time during Cronulla's history. But I just think, once again, you know, their problem is overcoming big games under the bright lights, uh, losing their two most experienced forwards in Aidan Tolman and uh, Andrew Fafita. I, I think Gallen would be a really nice addition. But, yeah, for me, it's James Maloney. You have to go with Maloney. Uh, we move to the Panthers, mate. Is easily, easily the hardest one. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what. I well, actually, maybe it's maybe not. Because mate, I thought the Cowboys was yeah, fucking no, hard. No, that was a tough gig. Yeah, I regretted taking Thurston out. Um, <sighs> Penrith, I, I've got I've got a couple of names written down. I'm not convinced to which direction I would go. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably going to be very, very boring here. Yeah. I think I'm bringing back Appy. Yeah, I, I thought you'd Appy? do that. Nah, I decided to not do that. I didn't want to uh, 
I didn't want to be so boring. It was. It would have been very easy to bring back Appy. Yeah, or, and it was. Yeah, but <laughs> you're gonna laugh. I'm bringing back Luke Britters. Yeah, right. Okay. I Fair just for out. the for the sake of the the yep. thing. I'm, I'm like bring, for like. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're miss, they're missing. I mean, they got Mitch Kenny, but it's the only position they're different in last year. The other name I had was Luke Lewis. Maybe he could play. Ooh. Maybe he could play. I re- I just I wanted to bring back Freddie so much, <laughs> but I just couldn't. <laughs> I, I I I I was looking at it. And I had a couple of back rowers that I was looking at, MG, Cartwright, and I thought, you know what? Fuck it. I'll just bring back Freddie, and I'm just going to play him on that left edge. And you think about the way that Viliami Kikau played last year. Tell me Freddie couldn't do that in a fucking half. Yeah, lane. yeah. So, but like, oh, <laughs> crazy. It's just, Freddie, it's funny. I went, I think it was last year, I went and looked at Freddie's career. Yeah. I think his 11th year in first grade was the first year he didn't play more than one position. Yeah. So, how can you not bring him back? But they're just so strong everywhere. So I just went. I'm not going to do Appy, even though obviously he's the pick. He's great. Um, probably, definitely, Pendus best hooker now. Uh, but yeah, just based. Pritis was there for so many years. He has probably the most obvious Clive Churchill winner that I've seen. So yeah, I went. I went Luke Pritis for that reason. It's great shout about his uh, Clive Churchill. I will die on that fucking. Yeah, no, I think it's one of the great sure. performances of all time. You have a look at Brad Fittler's career, uh, as Maddie was just saying. Um, he debuts in eighty nine. Say Freddie. 80, yeah, eighty nine. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Um, by nineteen ninety four, he'd won Dalliem Centre of the Year twice and Dalliem Lock of the Year once, and we're going to remember him as one of the greatest five eights of all time. Oh, he then went on wild. to win Dalliem Five Eight of the Year from ninety eight to two thousand two. He won it three times. It's just, it's just crazy. He's, he's got to be the next immortal. He has to be. He's got to be right up there with him. He's got to be fucking right up there. I, 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 no doubt in my mind, isn't it? I mean, him and. Darren Lockyer yeah, for me. And I'll also die on this hill that he, in 2004, he didn't win Dally M 5-8 of the year. Do you know who did win it? No. It was Darren Lockyer's first year at 5-8. Oh. I'm not saying Lockyer didn't deserve it, but I think the hype of Lockyer moving there for the first year made yeah. his performances even more impressive. Yeah. Uh, I think that if Lockyer would have waited until 05 or if he would have moved there in 03, for example, I reckon Freddie would have won it there. Yeah, fair enough. But like I'm looking at, I'm looking at Freddie's. Uh, I know you just read it out, but I'm gonna just read it out as a list. Sen- Dallium Center of the Year, 92, 93. Dallium Lock of the Year, 94. So that's three years, three years. Center Lock Center, and then Dallium Five Eighth of the Year, 98, 99, 2002. As a Immortal. 22 year old, yeah. Captain of the Kangaroos by 24, I think it was. Immortalize him now. Fucking unbelievable. Crazy. I'm, I'm, I hate the Roosters. Immortalize him. <laughs> Seriously. I'll tell you what was funny the other day, and I've never thought about it, but isn't it crazy how you look at what Matt Burton's done? Dally M Centre of the Year, won a premiership very yeah. early, moved clubs. He's now with Phil Gould, played for the Kangaroos at a very young age. Brad Fittler did the exact same thing, won at Penrith. Yeah. Moved to a club with Phil Gould. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's wild. And they're both, I wouldn't say, like, they're, they're different body shapes and whatnot, but the way that they play is very fucking similar, I reckon. Oh, Matt yeah. Burton, you, can like, see, you can see... A lot of Freddie in him for sure. Yeah, and I'm I'm so confident that's what Gus sees in him. Yeah. A hundred percent. So can't cannot wait to watch the career of uh him play that's out. That's a... gonna be unreal. Uh so I'm bringing back Appy. Appy. Are you gonna bring who, who's your final call? Are you gonna bring I reckon you could play Freddie on that left edge with in a heartbeat. Uh no, nah, I'll stick with I'll stick with Luke Prittis. Luke Prittis. Uh, yeah, there's just he's filling the the one gap that they have, even though they've got Kenny and Sonny <laughs> They're crazy, Penrith. Yeah, They're crazy. I think Luke Lewis there is a good shout. You've obviously got, you know, um, the hair pair that they that they both featured in that 03 grand final. Guys like Mark Guy, Johnny Cartwright, these sort of guys that were champion players as well. A heap of options to go through there with the Penrith Panthers. But, yeah. uh, Matty, I think just to summarise today, how difficult those four teams were. Like, even the easy ones were heaps fucking harder than the ones we did Yeah, at the end of last year. Yeah, for sure. Just shows how strong these four teams are. Yeah, I, uh, imagine if Penrith had the same team. You wouldn't be able to... You actually wouldn't be able to pick anyone. If they did have the same team, what would you do? I'd go Freddie because you can put him anywhere. Like, that's what i do. Where do you put him? I don't know. I mean, I'd obviously put him somewhere, but, like, I don't know. That's the... Yeah, it's... It's I'd so probably, I'd probably put him at left centre and... 
tell Tungo he can play reserve grade, which is crazy. <laughs> oh, but but that's probably brutal. that's probably what I do. It's probably what you'd have to do. Yeah. yeah. Insane. But that's that that is Tungo's centre at every club pretty much. It's yeah, just he's, crazy. without a doubt, he's a starting centre at every club, yeah. I reckon. They are so good, Penrith. And like I'd be very hesitant to break up that combination of Isaac Tungo and Taylor May as well. Isn't it funny that he that, that wasn't even the combo a year ago? No. <laughs> But mate, when I was sitting here 12 months ago talking about it, no one knew who they were. Yeah. No one had crazy. any idea who they were. Crazy. And is it crazy to think two years before that, we were talking about Josh Mansour as, as one of the best wingers in the competition. Yeah. Like, he's eight wingers ago. He's eight champion <laughs> wingers ago at the Penrith Panthers now. Yeah, fucking crazy, Penrith. It's wild. Yeah. Insane. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us once again. That'll finish off that series. If you'd like to go back and have a look at the other three episodes, they are crackers. They're available. Uh, if you go to playlists on Rugby League or YouTube, you'll be able to go through and watch those in the off season. Uh, from now on, me and Matty will be tearing into best 17s. I think we've got about eight more to go. So we'll have one a little bit later this week. And Beers and Breakevens returns on Wednesday and Thursday. Two episodes there going through Timmy's team and then going through my team as well. So plenty of content coming this week on YouTube.